How we doing, everybody? I am still here in Cancun, but I just want to give you a quick review on UFC 276. What an event, okay? Um, a lot of drama on display. A lot of... Uh, what did we see? We saw eye pokes. We saw retirements. We saw a lackluster main event. We saw Strickland get knocked out. So I'm going to go through it all right now. And of course, we're going to start with the main event. Israel Adesanya, last style bender, walked out of there uh, as the undertaker. Very charismatic, as we know. His ring entrances, or his cage walks, shall we say, they're always fun. They're always value for money. He always entertains. Sometimes, you know, he's a little high energy. He'll do a little dance routine. This time, of course, you know, paid homage to uh, The Undertaker. Walked out with the urn with Jared's ashes in it. He said he was going to deliver. He said he was going to knock him out. He said he was going to do it like Anderson Silva did against Forrest Griffin, that this was going to be a master class. But it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't. In fact, word on the street is that a lot of people were leaving the arena. They were beating the traffic. A friend of mine said, I left after two rounds. Now, I don't think it was that bad of a fight. <laughs> I mean, if I've paid for a ticket, I'm staying to the goddamn end. I want to see how it goes down. Because Jared Cannonier, you know, was always capable of getting a knockout. Always capable of connecting. The reality is, Israel Adesanya was the better kickboxer. We know that. That's what he does. Israel Adesanya is a tremendous champion. Defended the belt now six times. And he's always one step ahead. When it comes to the striking, we know. Listen, that was a beautiful display of kickboxing dominance. But we know that about Adesanya. We know that he can leg kick you. We know that he's got good reflexes. He can pick you apart with the hands. He can use the jabs. He can maintain distance and range. And as I say, chip away at the legs. But that's all we saw. You know, I would have... Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not insulting the champ, right? I'm a big fan of his work. I love his style. I, I, I'm a massive fan. Simple as that. But sometimes you want to see a little bit more. Okay, yes, of course, he would argue and say, listen, my goal was to defend the belt. And he did that successfully. And that's true. Mission accomplished, okay? Because for anyone that was complaining, anyone that was walking out to the car going, oh, come on, that was a lot of crap. I paid all this money and that's what I got. Well, they weren't defending the belt. They didn't have the pressure. They didn't have a legacy to protect, to defend as well. And a lot of money at stake down the line with future title fights. So a tremendous amount of pressure. His job was to win. But I do believe there is a certain pressure on the fighter, on the fighters in the octagon to go for it a little bit more. It's true that he was the better guy. He was the faster guy. He had the advantage every single round. Congratulations on a good performance, on a dominant win. I just would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a sense of urgency to finish. Same can be said, though, for Jared Cannonier. Listen, it takes two to tango, okay? Cannonier did not tango. Cannonier came in very prepared. He looked absolutely massive. He looked jacked, and he had good cardio to go five rounds. Jared Cannonier is a wonderful person. He's a great fighter. But I believe that when he watches that back, which he will, he's going to be annoyed with himself. He's going to be kicking himself. He's going to be pissed off with himself because that was it. That was his one shot. He's never going to get a shot. I think he's 38 years old. He's never going to get another world title fight. That was his one chance. What he showed was that he was good enough to stand essentially in the pocket or on the edge of the pocket the entire fight and not get pieced up, not get damaged, not get his nose broken, not get embarrassed, knocked out. Because he stood there for 25 minutes right on the edge of the pocket, train, exchanging blows, exchanging leg kicks. But he never went for it. He never said to himself, okay, right, I am down three rounds. I'm 38 years old. I want to be champion of the world. I want to make history. I want to set my family up in terms of money. You know, I want to be wealthy. I can do that if I beat this guy. I did not come here to lose. I did not come here for a moral victory to show that I'm good enough, just happy to be there. No, that's not what he came for. He came to win. He came to dominate Israel Adesanya. He came to knock him out. He showed that he was fast enough, that he had the technical acumen to stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but he wasn't good enough. So he should have taken risk. He should have swung. He should have gone for it. He should have taken chances. Listen, when you take chances, when you go forward, things can go wrong. You can get knocked out. But that's what we sign up for as fighters. That's why we get paid the big bucks. Now, I'm not saying Jared Cannonier is a coward. No way. It, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is he will regret not taking more chances. Okay? Because he lost.
and whether or not he had taken a chance and maybe walked on to the end of something, the result would have been the same. He would have still lost, but he would have made it exciting. He would have given it his all. As fighters, we know that we, we, when we go out there, the expression is we want to leave it all in the octagon. And when I used to watch my fights back, as long as I gave a good account of myself, as long as I left it all out there, as, lo as long as I did what I could have done, I left no regrets, I left no stone unturned, I could watch that back and be satisfied and say, you know what, I tried, I tried, I wasn't good enough, the better man beat me. But on this occasion, yes, the better man certainly was Israel Adesanya. That's not open for debate. But Cannoneer could have done more. Cannoneer could have taken risks. Cannoneer could have just swung for the fences a little bit. Essentially showing more regression. He was waiting for the perfect opening. Adesanya was waiting for the perfect opening. Uh, when they don't present themselves, you got to fight. you got to go for it. you got to put yourself on the firing line. you got to put yourself at harm's way, right? We're walking into an octagon. Four ounce gloves. You can punch, kick, knee, elbow, take people down, strangle them, armbar them, break legs, break arms, break jaws. That's what we sign up for. Sometimes you've got to make it ugly. It can't be a sparring session. However, sounds like I'm being a total hater. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just giving my honest thoughts. I'm a massive fan of both men. I love Jared Cannonier. He's such a, a great person. I've had him on my podcast on a few occasions. So I hope that he doesn't see this and thinks that I'm being super critical because I'm not. I thought he looked really good, but he just didn't go for it. Okay. And I think that will haunt him. And for Israel Adesanya, listen, the man's great. He's an incredible champion. I always talk about him. I love his charisma. I love his energy. I love what he brings to the table. He's very entertaining. The ring walk, DC, he loved that. We all know DC loves professional wrestling, which is weird for a grown-ass man, let's be honest. But still, DC absolutely loved it. I'm sure the crowd loved it. I'm sure a lot of wrestling fans around the world loved it, okay? The fight was not loved. There was a lot of, lot of booze. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Anderson Silva was one of the most entertaining fighters we ever saw in the sport. He had many fights that were just bloody awful. That one against Damian Meyer. I mean, come on, in Abu Dhabi. They, I remember afterwards, Dana White was absolutely disgusted with him. Uh, but that's the way it goes sometimes. They can't all be bar burners. They can't all be the type of fight where you're going to go out there and just make it a goddamn war. So the reality of the situation is congratulations to Israel Adesanya. He got the job done. He got the job done once again. He did it without taking damage. He did it without losing any brain cells. And he showed his technical brilliance once again. Is he going to be able to perform and do that against somebody that's as tall, that has the same skills, that has the same reach, that is also a kickboxer, and that has beaten you twice. And yes, of course, talking about Alex Pereira, who got a sensational victory in his own right. But I'm going to do some more videos. We're going to talk about them on those videos because I think Alex Pereira, Sean Strickland, well, that showed, didn't it? That showed. Sean got knocked out cold. And I think Pereira's coming for Israel Adesanya. But that's a video for another day. Anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe and ring the bell. Take care, guys.